Hello everybody, my name is Dustin Kendall and I'm just going to be doing a video today about creating a project on Mechanical Turk for bounding box annotations. Um, I had kind of a hard start. There wasn't really any good sources to actually find the find a good tutorial on how to use it. There's a lot of uh, stuff that you just kind of have to pick up on your own, so I'm trying to give anybody interested in getting bonding box annotations automated through Mechanical Turk um, and getting human intelligence tasks done that way to uh, get kind of a jump start on it. So if you're interested, go over to mturk.com and uh, you're not, you don't want to sign in as a worker unless you want to do annotations and get paid for it. If you want to pay for workers to do annotations, you just sign in as a, you go to sign in as a requester. But today I'm going to show you something a little bit different. We're going to go to the sandbox. Um, and that's just a way for you to kind of set up your project and get a feel for how it's going to look before you actually put it out for workers to work on and you have to pay money for. So it's a way for you to just test things out and be assured that you're not going to get charged for anything. So let's go to Sandbox and we're going to log in very quickly. <clears throat> so right over here we're going to, let's create a, hmm. okay we're going to go to new project <clears throat> and this project there's all kinds of uh, different things that you can human intelligence tasks that you can have done for you but in this one specifically we're going to do bounding box annotations for object detection systems such as YOLO so this is kinda of what a worker would see they would see your image and the labels that they can actually put bounding boxes around the labels um, so we're just gonna go over to create project So this is going to be a demo for YouTube. And you want to be descriptive in the title and the description and the keywords because when workers are browsing through the available projects to work on, that will help them um, decide on your project and see if it's uh, a good fit for them to do. And then the reward for assignment, depending on the complexity of the task, for object detections with only a few labels, you can usually get away with uh, a couple cents per image. And then the number of assignments per task. Usually for bounding box annotations, you want one assignment per task. Um, that is, and then the, the time allotted per assignment. This is how much time a worker has uh, once they start a task or an object detection or an annotation on a specific image to when they have to finish it to submit the results. Um, and then the entire task respire, expires in seven days. When I first did my first project, it took about four hours for all thousand images to get annotated. So usually seven days is, uh, you know, I just left it at that, but I didn't have a problem in getting my annotations done before that. And then auto approve. Um, if you don't manually go through and approve each individual images annotation then they will automatically get approved in three days and the worker gets paid um, so you kind of want to do that before three days is the standard I would just leave it at that make sure you get all your images approved or rejected before then and then require masters to be workers to or require workers to be masters to do your tasks bounding box annotations don't really need masters I think anybody could really jump in and do all right with it their first go. It's not uh, something that you'd need to pay more for, which you would need to pay more for uh, a master to work on your project. Um, and then if there's any chance that your project contains nudity, do this. You don't want your account flagged. Um, sometimes you, you don't know what's in all the images, so you know there might be some nudity that you're not aware of. So just be to be safe, you can check that. And then we go over to the design layout. So this is where you can write a more descriptive description of what you want your workers to do on the task, your short instructions. Um, and then up here is more of the metadata for the project, such as what labels you want identified in your batch. Um, so we could just add more labels here. And then the source image URL, this gets replaced autonomously uh, once you upload your, uh, your variable CSV file, which we'll get into later. 
Um, for now, we could probably replace by whatever you give Mechanical Turk. So we can preview this. And now the workers, you can see the extra labels I've added. Um, they'll be able to select the labels and select where in the image the labels are. They can view the instructions, which if you want to be more descriptive, that's highly encouraged. Um, you can also, I think, add images in here. Um, make your tutorial as specific as possible so you get the best results for your project or for your batch. And then the tool guide kind of shows them how to use the, the tool right here. Um, so I'm just going to go over to finish. And now we can go over this demo to YouTube project. And if we go to publish batch, it's going to ask for a CSV file with the variables you specified for your project. So the uh, San, let's look at this sample CSV file and you can see the first row contains the variable names that's going to be seen in that JavaScript if you can see this uh, top text right here is going to be the exact string that was in the project description with the uh, the dollar sign and the curly braces around it. So that's kind of all these are going to get replaced for each individual task. Um, so you, you're going to want URL data right here so the workers can actually see the images that you want. Um, you can host this in a S3 bucket or a Google Drive bucket. It really doesn't matter. You just have to have the URLs in place in this file in each row. You can also add more variables if you want. I originally added height and width, which I realized that when mTurk throws back that data, they actually add that uh, that data in a JSON string for you. So right now, all you need is the image URL. It's uh, pretty easy. I have a script which I'm going to link to in the description. So this is um, one of the scripts that I had actually made for processing the data. Right here we have a folder with a bunch of images in it. Um, so I am going to navigate to the directory with the script in it, which is a document utils folder. I will provide a link in the description after I uh, finish this video. Um, so we have this Python script. You'll probably have to install a couple of Dependencies. I'm not really sure what they are off the top of my head, but um, so we just put this mturk variables.py, and right here we're going to put the i as the input of the image directory. Um, so we're going to do this documents. Uh, so you have to add the little tilde so it knows in home directory. We're going to go to this one. And, uh, YouTube demo so we just add that and now we're gonna add a URL and the URL actually gets prepended to this image name so we're gonna come up here and I actually open my s3 bucket and this is my URL um, I'm going to actually put this paste this into here and we're just gonna backspace and you kinda want that forward slash because when it concatenates them you'll have the right image and then we're gonna name an output folder or an output CSV so it's switch o demo dot CSV so it should go through the whole folder list all the images add them to the end and as long as they're in the correct bucket you're gonna see everything and it's gonna be uh, good to go so we can go over um, in here we have this demo dot CSV um, let's open it and so you can see we have the image URL variable with all the correct URLs for the uh, project. Um, so all this is correct. I actually cut down the project significantly because in the sandbox it only allows up to 500 images. So we're gonna go ahead and publish a batch and see how that looks in the sandbox. So we're gonna publish batch we're going to go to the demo CSV file. Everything should be good. Um, click upload. Now it's going to give you a little preview of your uh, your project here. Um, so this is the project. Um, these aren't the correct labels for what I wanted, but now they can come here and go to your image and select the correct objects, um, and then you just submit. And uh, this is the JSON data that you actually get 
and a return CSV and I'm about to go over that um, so whenever you're actually ready to really publish your batch um, it's usually uh, pretty easy this is a sandbox um, we're gonna go over to the real batch which is on mturk and so we're gonna go over here and you're, you can actually create the real project over here um, and then you just publish your batch here and make sure all your parameters and filling everything out is the way you want them to be um, and then once you publish it they'll be able to annotate the data like uh, I don't know where it went but they'll be able to annotate the data um, so this is the sandbox we're just gonna publish it um, and then it just shows you like you know uh, how much in progress it is it usually should fill up pretty quickly um, gives you your estimated costs we use the mechanical Turk and then once you're done you'll get something called results which I'll go over to an actual project that I actually did um, which, okay so let's go to manage and then I will be able to review results I'm gonna download this CSV it, please wait while your batch results file is getting generated now it's gonna give you two things approve assignment and that means you put an X under the approve column um, and that will actually approve that hit task and pay the worker that did it whatever your um, your per task fee was and then if you want to reject it you can put anything like in the feedback um, under reject and that um, that just rejects it and then the worker doesn't get paid and the hit task goes back out to uh, the mechanical Turk to be redone um, you put usually put the reason say the annotation was correct the bonding box wasn't in the right position um, you know it's your model so you'll know like what looks correct and what doesn't so I'm just gonna download this um, we'll just open this and see what it looks like so this is your hit ID this is a unique ID for the human intelligence task that they have um, this is the hit type ID which probably means it's a bounding box annotation or it's associated with your project um, title a lot of meta information that you don't really need and it's kind of a uh, it's not that great because uh, you know it will tell you the duration like you don't need I don't know if you really need that I don't know what you're actually doing with all this because most people are going to be using this data for their machine learning algorithms um, so this is the input image URL it gives you the URL and then it gives you this huge JSON string and this is what's useful to you as long as well as with the image height and width you know those are pretty important too because a lot of like I think I said the machine learning algorithms are usually normalized so you need to use these numbers to normalize your data set between 0 and 1 at least that's the way it is for YOLO so if we go in here into this uh, this JSON string it is height 56 um, which is the height of the bounding box and then it's the top top left corner coordinates and pixels right here and then the width of the bounding box as well as, well as with the label and this is a J, there's JSON object for each box that was actually in the image um, which is really useful but it's useful for computers like looking at this I don't know if this worker did a great annotation for this image or not um, it's kinda like I don't know did he just put it anywhere in hopes that I wouldn't look at it and it would get auto approved so the idea is um, I'm working on another project to actually view the annotations and then write back to the CSV you know whether it's an approve or reject so if I wanted to approve I just add to this box an X and then if I wanted to reject like the next one I would write um, there the annotation wasn't correct you know something anything in the box you know give the the worker feedback and then once you go through all these images um, you know approve reject approve reject um, you would actually just upload the file back to Mechanical Turk and it goes through the images and approves and rejects the the hit ta the hit task by its hit type ID or its hit ID over here so all of it happens automatically but you know once again this CSV file isn't really helpful for a human I can't really look at these numbers and tell you whether this is a good annotation or not um, I'm not that smart I don't think anybody is um, so there will I will post another video about using the other program I'm writing to actually view these and then write the the um, 
the approval or rejections back to a CSV file that can be uploaded to um, Amazon Mechanical Turk. I plan on using Python and plan on using tkinter and matplotlib to uh, generate the images and then have like a graphical user interface where a user can hit a keyboard to hit a key on the keyboard to approve or reject and scroll through the images. Um, that's the idea. I will create an update on that as soon as possible. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comments or message me directly. Um, I'm more than willing to help anyone. So um, thanks. Thanks for watching the video.